Hey guys, and welcome back, or welcome for the first time back to the Bat Cave, um, which is what uh, we call this room. Uh, I didn't do a video last week, as a few of you may have noticed, uh, but real quickly before I dig into this week's comics, I want to take a moment to ask you guys if anybody read Legacy of Luther Strode number two last week, I need your help. Oh, also prerequisite, do you speak Russian? Um, I'm sure this is on the internet somewhere, but like a third of last week's issue was in Russian, and what they say, I imagine would change the story quite a bit and be fairly eye-opening, so if anyone just happens to read Luther Strode and speak Russian or is not as lazy as I am and has found that link somewhere online, because I know somebody's done this, um, I would love to know and fill in the gaps there. Um, anyway, this week uh, is an amazing week for comics. I really struggled with trying to decide which ones I wanted to read first, which ones I, you know, because I just I wanted to read them all, um, or most of them, a lot of them. There's some a couple cool, really um, cool new ones, um, and some favorites as well. Uh, first up, we have um, The Wicked and the Divine here. We got two covers out for you to choose from which they typically do, which is really cool. Um, this is a new arc, and this arc is going to be special in the fact that each issue is supposed to have a different guest artist, which I think is a really cool thing, and it gives them a chance to kind of catch up, and then they don't have to play the six-month waiting game that, uh, like, Saga and a billion other stories do, because it became popular. And no, I, I appreciate it. I actually really do. I really appreciate the the image guys and putting out a really good quality story and not, uh, I don't know, uh, cutting corners just to get it out on a monthly date. I would rather wait for a book and have it be what it was intended to be than it just be rushed out the door and it be less than amazing. Um, but I think it's really cool that they are doing this Wicked and Vine and each issue is supposed to um, focus on a different one of the Pantheon, which I think is a really cool way to showcase different artists' talents. And um, there's actually a couple really good artists. Let me see who is going to be um, capped for this one. Da, 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 da. <sighs> so um, this one was from Kate Brown and we're going to have... Oh my gosh, it's on here somewhere. Hmm. Okay, I'm not going to spend two minutes reading this comic for you while I try to figure this out. Um, there will be different guest artists, and they're going to be great. I think one of them was Brandon Graham. One of them was Brandon Graham. So, good stuff. Very cool. Super stoked about that. Uh, one of my favorites up next. To number 50, which means that there's only 10 issues left. There is two story arcs left to go before this is all said and done, and everything happens. All of the things happen in this issue. It is crazy as ridiculous. She was usually crazy and ridiculous, but extra crazy and ridiculous for you on that 50 mile marker. Um, then we have our um, first number one of the evening one I've been really excited about here um, from the one and only BKV, Brian K. Vaughn here, um, and Steve Scrope. Gross, grossy, I don't know. He did the storyboard art for like the Matrix and a couple other things. Um, and it's his art is really, really cool. So, um, 100 years ish in the future, and this book is the US versus Canada with giant robots and freedom fighters. And this follows a ragtag group of Canadian freedom fi fighters called the um, 2 4. Um, from a variety of different backgrounds, people who would never would have met if there wasn't this kind of apocalypse with all these missiles and stuff. Really cool concept, cool art, and it's Brian K. Vaughn, so I trust this dude, and I will follow this book and see where it takes me, because I'm sure it's going to take me to some really cool, badass places. So why not? Um, then we have uh, the Nail Biter, well not the Nail Biter, Nail Biter, number 14. And this this book, oh my gosh, uh, we're starting to maybe get some answers here, or starting to get to a place where we might start to soon get some answers here. And uh, this is great. It's there's a there's a lot of mysteries in this story, and 
I feel it'll be a really cool reveal as they all come through. And, oh, it just, it torments me in the meantime. Um, then we have up number two of a really fun one, um, Airboy. I don't know if I got the chance to review this when it came out the first time. Uh, if I didn't, uh, this is a very unusual uh, fiction comic book, but your two of your main characters are James Robinson and Greg Hinkle here. Uh, who are told, uh, James Robinson is told, hey, we want you to revamp this character Airboy, who's really outdated and nobody cares about anymore. So pick a cool artist. And so in order to get inspiration, they uh, get into a lot of sordid activities, lots of, you know, hookers and blow and the whatnot. And uh, somehow they also meet the real Airboy. So it's really, really strange, really fun. They poke fun at themselves and, you know, the industry and it's just, it's a really great read, and I'm so enjoying it. Uh, then we have up a, another new number one, this one here from Boom, The Spire, from Simon Spurrier and Jeff Stokely. Um, so this character here, uh, like, I'm trying, I don't know how to pronounce it, it's like Sa Se, um, there's like a weird little accent-y thing. Um, member of the city guard here. This is um, taking place in uh, like a really cool fantasy world. The art is fantastic. Let me um, um, take a chance to show you. But she's very unusual in the sense that she's a city guard member, she, but she's also a member of a group of people called the um, Sculpted, uh, which seem to have some sort of genetic modifications. You don't know exactly how this all happens. But there's a lot of like xenophobia and prejudice and racism going on in here. I'm trying to find a good page that um, can show off the art without. Um... Okay, just this is this is some fun stuff here. This is just it's really great. Re that really cool independent style, and uh, I am interested to see what happens with it. So yeah. Then we have up deadly class. Oh, okay, so at the end of the last issue, something really crazy happened. It was crazy. Um, it's one of those things that people do, and it always makes you go, what? I don't know, I'm just talking. Um, what am I? Uh, so this issue leaves you guys dealing, well, the characters dealing with, um, the aftermath of other crazy things that happened previously. It's so hard sometimes to talk about books that don't give spoilers because I understand that yes last month's issue came out last month but for those of people who haven't actually jumped on the book yet I don't want to be like and when this thing happened and then you know take away something that will be a cool moment for them when they get there. Um, but I will say that Marcus is such an asshole. He is such a horrible human being but a lot of them are in their own special unique way and but it's a great book so I guess you don't need good people anti-heroes are are in vogue these days from what I have noticed and then I have terrible segues between comics I'm sorry and then as if I was just gonna talk about this next thing as it was part of the last conversation anyway I'm real rambly tonight. Uh, we have Outcast number 10. So this one has in fact been optioned and more than that, the pilot has been shot and some additional footage for the 2016 Cinemax TV show of The Outcast. So they've got a lot of stuff. They talk about it a little bit in the back here, how they're working really hard on that. Um, and as a comic, this is a really crazy issue in, in general. It's a cool concept for a book. And this book was bought as a show was optioned I think after number one came out maybe even before that that's how much they trust Kirkman and that's how much they trust what kind of book he's gonna bring to the table and you know I can totally see it being a cool show and it's a great book and it's kind of creepy at times and I still don't know entirely what's going on with everything but it's getting very very good um, then we have one of my favorites, uh, just cause it's so fun, Squirrel Girl, the unbeatable Squirrel Girl. Um, everybody's gone crazy, everybody, and it's up to Squirrel Girl when the problem is too big for the Avengers, then Squirrel Girl is there to save the day. And you get a couple other guest appearances, you get, um, the Thors get to hang out with them for a little bit which is always fun I like how this you know this book and you know ones like Howard the Duck are 
you know, very light, light and fun and a little snarky sometimes when riffing off Marvel characters and they come across a little goofy, but I really like it and it's, it's a good time. Um, so then we have a, another new number one, which um, I know my fiance has been stoked about for so long. He has had it on his pull list for, I don't know, like a year and a half or something. I don't know. Um, but it's here. This is um, Eight House number one, Arkling. Um, so I really haven't checked too much into this. I know he's been really excited, but it's Brandon Graham and it's Marion Churchland and her art is really beautiful. Um, so from what I have gleaned from this, um, it focuses primarily on two characters, Sir Arclight and the lady who is um, a character who's kind of shrouded and has like these weird little sticky things or tendrils that come out. But it seems like she isn't really human, but it implies that she may have been at one time. There's a lot of occult stuff and magic and, you know, crazy cool stuff. And there's like a code at the back where you can learn the language that they use in the book, which is kind of fun. Um, there's actually a few other ones that came out this week that I just haven't had a chance to read because there's so many good comics and because I'm super, super engrossed still in um, another Robin Hobb series, The Live Ship Traders now. I'm reading The Mad Ship and I am loving it and I am going to be caught up with all the series hopefully by the time that the fifth trilogy second book comes out in August. Anyway, that's just stuff I'm excited about. Uh, that's it for me this week though, so um, go out there, do something fun. Hopefully it's not as hot where you live as it is here. It's been over 100 for like the last two weeks. I've seen 113 and it's disgusting and I hate it. So hopefully you're somewhere cool or somewhere that you can get cool easily, enjoy some books, go see some cool sh movies, Mad Max is out, Ant-Man's gonna be out soon, cool stuff. Anyway, yeah, take it easy, have a good night or morning or whatever time of day it is when you're watching this. Blah. End my rambling. All right. Bye. <laughs>